Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 22 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I promised you guys a tree farm. So last episode, I made a bunch of cool gadgets like this nifty here, Staff of Traveling, which lets me uh, zap over to any and all of my nearby um, travel anchors that we've got from Ender.io. I made uh, a couple nifty tools and gadgets, just some good stuff to have around. Uh, I think I put all my blood magic sigils that I made in my magic chest over here. Yeah, just dumped them to the AA system. I'm curious where my, okay, life points are not bad at the moment, cool. Um, what I'd like to do this episode is work on a tree farm because one of the things that I'd like to have a good amount of power for is this build over here. I wouldn't mind uh, having some form of coal and wood supplies coming in. So obviously I've got this cool build over here that's using pretty much 160 RF per tick. So I've got two power options for this. I could get a couple more magmatic dynamos and plug them in over here so that they can power my farm, my uh, enderman spawner or my zombie spawner thing. Or uh, I could go ahead and start working on a tree farm. And we're going to need a tree farm anyway because, you know, that way I don't have to handle or worry about wood or saplings or any other stuff. And I can use the charcoal for a lot of other things. So that's absolutely what I want to do this episode is get a tree farm going. Now, I went ahead and did a little bit of trying to come up with a good way. I, I came up with some really over-the-top tree farm methods that I've never done before, but trust me when I just say that they were inefficient and a hassle and wouldn't be uh, as useful as I wanted. And of course, there's many options that I've used in the past. We've got forestry, we've got Steve's carts, we've got Ender.io, and we've got a few others. Now, the goal with any tree farm is that you should have a large amount of wood and charcoal production, and of course, uh, saplings and apples, if you're interested in that as well. And you should also uh, make sure it's self-sufficient so they can always run and you never really have to maintain it. So you don't even have to worry about it anymore. Once this tree farm's built, we can go ahead and just walk away and just magically wood and charcoal will get created. Uh, what I'd like to do is go ahead for this one and use Ender.io. Now, if you watch my server play series, you'll know that I've used Ender.io there as well. Um, but I didn't want to do a Steve's Cars tree farm because that requires a lot of resources and I it also requires a lot of time. Uh, the Ender.io one, though, because I've done it recently, I want to try and improve upon it. I want to make it more efficient. So we're going to uh, do our best to make this uh, slightly different because it's something similar to uh, a build that we've done recently, but also more efficient so that you can get even more um, wood and resources out of it. I think it's going to be about as efficient as it can be with these upgrades that I have planned. So that's what we're going to work on today. We're going to get the uh, farming station from Ender.io. We're going to go plant it. I think I want to have it back here behind my wheat farm. I want to try and keep the farms together. And who knows, maybe eventually I'll make this like one giant like area where I have all my different farming materials. As you can see, my cows did die again. I don't know why. Um, I told you I've never had good luck with cow farms or something. I don't know if it's that like maybe the eye of the Asians takes a while to, to register. Um, it also could be like that I just don't have this area chunk loaded. I don't know. But my cows, well, they keep disappearing on me. So I'm going to have to try and figure out another solution. But I'm not going to worry about that just yet because I have tons of uh, beef and leather. The farm worked great. It just for some reason, it keeps killing off the last couple animals, and it should be keeping like 15 in here. So I have no idea how that's happening, if they're despawning or what. Something weird is going on. I'll track it down and, and improve upon that animal farm at some point. But at least for now, what I can do is get started making my tree farm. So to get started, we're going to need a farming station. Uh, farming station does require a machine chassis. It requires pulsating crystals, so some ender... Uh, nuggets and some diamonds. Uh, we're going to need the zombie logic controller. We're going to need a diamond toe. So a couple uh, expensive items. Nothing too crazy though. I'm going to go ahead and prepare all this stuff and then I'll be back in just a minute uh, ready to roll with some of the things I have planned. Okay. See you guys in just a moment. All right guys. Step one is complete the farming station, ready to go. Uh, next up, I'm going to need a couple more blocks. So why don't I craft them mostly off camera so I can show you the actual build. All right, guys, I think I've got everything I need for the initial components of this build. There's going to be multiple steps here, and they're going to be pretty different from the way I've done this in the past uh, in, this, in the server play series. 
semi-recently. But uh, because it's going to be so different, make sure that you uh, follow along because I think that this is going to be, in the end, even more efficient than the build I did previously. So the reason I have the torches there is that's what I wanted to map out as where we're going to have um, our, our setup pretty much. So you know what I should probably do is grab my shovel because I'm going to need to get into there. Um, you know, I like to be in bat mode because I can sneak into small spaces. I have just a regular shovel in here. I have a stone one. I could have sworn I had a better shovel hanging around, but maybe it's over here somewhere. Huh. Last place it might be would be in here. Nope. All right. So let's get. I want a better shovel than this. I can use the paradox. There we go. And you can just basically be trashed. I don't need a stone shovel. So what I want to make is this farm. Now, in order to use this farming station, there's two or three things we're going to need. Number one, we're going to need power. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is clear out a little bit of space underground here so I can connect into the power line that's actually not too far away, luckily. So let's tap into this guy, and we'll just start running him straight across uh, into where the power line is going to need to feed, like so. Now that he's got power coming into him, nice, uh, we can go ahead and start moving on to the next stage of this build. So I might want to have a little bit of space cleared out around down here, we'll see. And I might need to rearrange where these wires are, but I just want to get the power flowing in there temporarily. That'll probably be sufficient. So right now it's telling us that we have no seeds. So we need something to plant. Let's go get ourselves some saplings. So first things first, saplings should be in here. If I just grab a stack, it'll be enough to get the full-sized farm that's available from uh, this thing. So let's get some dirt covering this up. And throw the seeds in there that we need. Ta-da! It'll start planting for us. So nice and easy and nothing terribly new. Uh, I do want to have access to this area, so let's sneak down into here. There we go. Now I can get down here and do any work I need to do. So the first thing that we need to do to get this thing actually working is get ourselves an axe. Axes are required because that machine requires an axe to keep running, basically. So one of our goals for this build is going to be the uh, automation of the production of axes. So I'm going to do things a little differently, like I said, than my single player series. And that's one of the things that we're going to do differently. Instead of using uh, wooden axes, we're going to use stone axes. And you'll see why in just a minute. And I'd better sleep through the night because it looks like uh, we're almost there. I'll be back once it's daytime. So in order to chop down these trees, obviously we need something to chop them down with. So I'm going to go ahead and grow one of these uh, saplings into a tree. And you'll notice that it's telling me there's no axe. So it detected there's a tree by uh, this thing, and it needs an axe in order to operate. So by throwing an axe in there, boom, takes care of it. Nice. So these two slots are both available for either an axe or a hoe, depending on if you're using this for uh, a tree farm or a wheat farm or something of that type. So you can actually use this for different types of farms. Also, if you throw a capacitor in here, I believe you can increase the size of this farm but I think the size will be sufficient for us for now so one of the first things we want to do is store some of this wood so let's get a couple things uh, I want to get some barrels and uh, we're gonna start storing some of the wood along with some of the saplings and apples that we get because we're gonna get more saplings than we wind up using so there's four things we're going to wind up getting out of this tree farm, and I'll probably wind up eventually moving these barrels. I wouldn't mind having them actually in my base uh, and available to me there, which uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem. Just might require me running some uh, Ender IO cabling, but we'll, we'll see about that. For now, let's just get these guys pre-populated with the types of material you're going to have in them. Uh, we're going to want to store wood. Uh, saplings, apples, and charcoal, and I'm going to go ahead and lock them all so that they always store exactly those items. Cool? So, so far that's where we're going to be storing the items. Let's actually get them out of there. So in order for that to work, we're going to need to uh, shift back into bat mode and probably sneak back underground. But first we're going to want to get underneath these barrels here. Cool. And then we can go probably straight down here. I guess the one downside of that mode is that when items get sucked into you in magnet mode, they're right in your camera view, but oh well, that's okay. Bat mode's worth it. 
Okay, so uh, in order to get the charcoal, we're going to need a uh, smeltery. So I've got an alloy smeltery right here. This guy is going to accept uh, wood and turn it into charcoal for us. Of course, he uh, will only do that if we give him some power. So let's run some energy directly into him. Now I am hooking this up to my main base, but I might wind up um, powering this off the charcoal we get from the tree farm. So I have to debate if I want to separate this tree farm and have it be self-sufficient so that I'm not wasting lava power to run this tree farm. I'm, I'm probably actually going to wind up doing that, but for now I'm hooking it directly into my main base's power. Eventually I think I will pull it out but we'll see how things go. Uh, now the next step is to get the um, items out of the farm. And I'm just gonna run the conduits right along here and into this guy. Uh, and then from there, I think what I'll do is probably run this over to here. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, that looks good, right? Cool. Okay, so now we've got the way to get the items out. What I want to do is specify the following. This guy, we're going to pull wood out, we're going to extract it, um, probably, hmm, yeah, how do I want to do this? You know what, guys, I think I've just come up with an even more efficient way to do this. Uh, I'm not going to use the item conduits. I'm going to use a new mod that we haven't played with yet in the series, Steve's Factory Manager. This is going to allow us to do things even more efficiently than I'd originally planned. I just came up with this idea, so I'm pretty excited about it. Let me show you guys what Steve's Factory Manager is all about. I'm going to need to create a couple blocks here. Uh, it shouldn't be too much, actually. It should really just be uh, the Factory Manager itself and some inventory cables. Steve's factory manager is pretty much the king of uh, producing um, machines that can be automated. Um, there's almost nothing you really can't do with it. There's just some crazy amount of stuff. So I'm just gonna need some gold and some glass and we should be in pretty good shape, ready to roll. I might have the ability to chisel this back into normal glass. I kind of forget, I think I do know. Can I chisel you back to normal glass? I cannot. Okay. That's unfortunate. Well, time to cook up some glass. Shouldn't be too hard. Might have some in here. No. Sand, by chance? Sure. Alright, so, Steve's Factory Manager, what's it do? Oh, man. Let me tell you. What doesn't it do? Um, Alright, you should be in furnace mode for that. There we go. That's better. Cool. So I'll get a couple of these components going. So the factory manager itself is the brains of the operation. You're going to need one and only one of those for every um, set of these that you do. And then we're also going to need uh, some smooth stones. Let's get two of them, looks like. And then we should be ready to go with this. Cool. So the factory manager itself, he's going to be the guy in charge of doing most of the work. Um, now, you connect up different blocks to interact with the world. For the most part, we're only going to need some inventory cables. So I'm just going to get a few of these. Um, that should be good, at least for now. And, yeah, if that's not, you know what, let's get one more set just to be safe. Cool. And then we can put this stuff away. I don't really need him anymore. Or you or you. Cool. So now the Steve's factory manager block is going to be responsible for a couple components of this. Let's sleep through the night again and then we'll get started adding on to this setup. So when I tell you guys that um, we basically have this ridiculous about of ability to automate things with Steve's Factory Manager, I'm really not exaggerating. You can do a lot with Steve's Factory Manager, and we're going to see all the compo capabilities of Steve's Factory Manager right about now. So the first thing I'm going to do is set it up so that everything we get out of the farming station is going to go into the chest. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I want to be able to um, access the items from the farming station underneath and I can't use Steve's factory cable with the energy conduits. I would have to have the cable on another side and I don't want this jutting out of the ground. So basically what we want to do is make sure that we have um, the proper setup here. Now you can see I'm already getting a bunch of um, uh, apples and wood. So let's go ahead and configure this cable here. 
and we're going to use the green color. We're actually going to tell this guy to be uh, in out. Uh, we're going to insert on, um, you know what? Green's probably good for insert. We're going to extract on brown and it's going to be always active and no self feeding. And then down here, we're going to set this guy to in out and we're going to insert on brown. Okay, so what that should do is start moving all the wood and apples and everything we get into the chest from this inventory buffer here. It should not take any of the saplings though, which is good. Um, any excess saplings that we have above and beyond the ones we have here will get moved in, but we don't have to worry too much about that. Cool. Those will eventually make their way into the chest. So that's the first part. The next part of this is to set down the factory manager machine itself. So in order to interact with Steve's factory manager, you need to have some cables connecting the factory manager to all the blocks that you want to interact with. So in order to do this, I'm going to run these cables right over to the alloy smeltery. Uh, it's already touching the chest, so we don't need a cable touching the chest because the machine inventory manager is touching it already. And then I just wanna have them all available to hook into this guy right here. And we'll run these straight over like this. Cool. Now, the machine inventory manager, which is a complicated looking interface, but trust me, it's not that bad. A few people don't seem to like when I do a lot of Steve's factory manager stuff, so uh, for you guys, I won't be doing too much, but I do wanna make sure that those of you who are interested in learning Steve's factory manager know how it works. So I'm gonna do some very basic stuff with it so you guys can have an understanding of how this build is going to function, okay? So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is interact with the alloy smeltery, okay? And what that's gonna do is we're going to tell the alloy smeltery to um, pretty much get some wood. So what we want to do with Steve's factory manager, get wood out of the chest, place it in the alloy smeltery. That should be your uh, first priority with your wood. Okay. So in order for this to work, we're going to do the following. Let's get an input. So an input is what tells the Steve's factory manager where we're getting items from. That's the chest. Okay. The input, we're going to expand this. We're going to tell it which inventory, and you can see all the inventories we've hooked up with cables are listed here. We want to say the chest is where we're going to get items from. And which side of the chest do we want to pull from? Chests, it doesn't matter. So we're just going to say north and activate. That doesn't matter at all. And items, we're going to say which items are we going to pull out of the chest. Uh, I'm actually going to tell it we want to pull every item out of this chest. Okay, So all the items should get pulled out of the chest by the uh, factory manager. So we want to do an empty blacklist, meaning everything. Okay. Now, where do we want to put items? What we want to do is specify where items are going to wind up going. So what we want to specify here is the alloy smeltery. Okay. So we want to get the wood out of the chest and output it to the alloy smeltery. Again, it doesn't really matter which side we go with. Uh, I guess we could go with the upside. That should be fine. And what items, instead of an empty blacklist, we don't want to let everything go in there because we don't want saplings or apples to land in there. That would probably not work, right? So we want to specify a white list of items. We're going to tell it which items are allowed to go in there. And in this case, it's going to be oak wood. Now, if we wanted to, we could specify exactly how many are allowed, but I want to let it put as much in there as possible. So let's go ahead and do that. In order to get this to work, we just need to connect um, from from the bottom of the input slot to the top of the output command. Okay, Connecting these together means that this runs first and this runs next. So we're going to get items out of the chest and then we're going to put only wood into the alloy smeltery. Now the only way to get this to work, um, well there's several ways to get it to work, but the one we're going to go with is a timed trigger. So every so often it's going to try and pull items out of the chest and do something with them. By default it's going to be every one second. So if we watch, what we should see, once I connect the trigger interval to the input command, we should see wood disappear from there and land in the chest. Cool. And you know what, I've just changed my mind a little bit. I do want to actually specify how many pieces of wood are allowed to go in there. So we're going to specify one stack at a time. We don't need to have more than one stack at a time cooking. So let's specify amount, one stack of 64. Now when I throw the wood in here, you'll notice the first stack goes in uh, and the rest don't really go in until, you know, a piece of that burns up. So we're going to let that thing cook and make its charcoal. What we're going to do next is take a look upstairs and notice that, hey, our tree farm stopped working because we ran out of axes. That's unfortunate. Let's do something about that, shall we? So what I want to get is an igneous extruder. Hooray, I've got that. Nice. So the igneous extruder, basic, is going to uh, produce lava and water making cobblestone. And we're going to use the cobblestone to make the picks. 
Cool. So let's go ahead and get ourselves just a bucket of each. Um, I'll get the lava first and I'll get the water from outside in a minute there. I should have access to lava right there. Nice. I could run all the way through there, but that's okay. So let's go down here. We're going to place down our igneous extruder and we're going to want to make sure that our um, Steve's factory manager block can access it. So let's just put it, it doesn't really matter where, right here. We're going to fill it up with lava. I'm just going to snag some water from nearby real quick. And then we can start automatically crafting axes. Now what's nice about this is Steve's factory manager can do basic crafting operations for us. And we're going to use Steve's factory manager to do so. So let's hop down here again. We're going to make sure this thing's set to produce cobblestone. The nice thing about this is cobblestone will always get created for free. So it never uses either the water or the lava. We'll have all the cobblestone we want. And uh, you know what, we'll configure this guy to output to the down. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't have to output to the down inventory where the cable is, but I just did that so that I remember. So in order to produce uh, what we want to produce here, we're going to have to do the following. And let's make sure that we have enough wood in here for the time being. We might need a little bit more. We'll see. I'm going to go ahead and configure this guy to only need, for now, 32. Because I want to make sure we have some wood in the chest. So let's snag this guy, put it in here, and it's going to go ahead and do that. Cool. And once this thing fills up, it won't be able to produce anymore, so we'll be in good shape. Cool. So let's configure the next thing. So we're going to do another trigger, and what we're going to do is set it up so that Steve's factory manager will always produce uh, a bunch of cool stuff for us. So we're going to need some crafters. Cool. Let's take a look. So the first thing we're going to check is where are we going to get items from. We're going to get items from the chest, and we're also going to get it from the igneous extruder. Pretty cool. We can see both. And uh, we're going to define this to run the shared command run once, so it'll, you know, access um, both of these things. And we're going to activate on the north side. You know, let's activate it on the down side. That should be fine. We'll deactivate north. So it always pulls from the bottom. So it'll pull from the bottom of the chest and it'll pull from the bottom of the igneous extruder. Um, we're going to leave the whitelist blank for now. What we're going to do is then specify how to craft. Now, unfortunately, we're going to have to turn this wood into sticks in order to make the um, item. So first, we want to craft uh, wood. So let's make wood. And you'll notice that when we put the crafting item here, oak wood turns into oak wood planks. Cool. And the priority will be um, craft before moving. We'll leave that as is. And the excess inventory. So excess inventory is if you have extra items left over after crafting, where do they go? We'll put them in the chest for now. Okay. So we'll hook that up. And then, uh, let's see, what are you not happy with? The white list is empty. So we'll make it an empty black list. And we're good. Where does the uh, wood go? Well, we want to output that to the chest inventory. Cool. We'll hook that up and we're going to uh, target, doesn't matter, down, that's fine. And we're going to whitelist it so that only certain items are allowed to go in here in this step. It's going to be oak wood planks and we're going to specify that four will be the only amount allowed in the chest at any time. So watch what happens when I connect the trigger to this line. There we go, we got oak wood planks. And you'll see that there's four in there. It's not making any more. Anytime I take these four away, within a second, it should automatically craft another set. Pretty cool, I think so. So now the next command is pretty similar to what we did last time. We're going to say wood plus wood equals sticks. And we're going to give this uh, the same priority system. We're going to say the excess inventory once again will be the chest. And then we can say um, that the output for this will once again be the chest. But this time, uh, we're going to specify whitelist. Only sticks are allowed in here uh, with a count of four once again. Cool. So let's go ahead and move this output line to here and this one to here. And what we should wind up with then is four sticks. And then uh, shortly thereafter, we should also get uh, the two more or the, the four more oak wood planks. Cool. So that looks like it's working pretty well. So then the last component here is to tell the crafting system uh, that we want a stick plus a stick. What's nice is this thing kind of remembers. Uh, what you used last time. So I'm going to say cobble. So that's going to make us an axe. And we're going to uh, output to the chest whitelist stone axe one. Okay. 
So when we hook these guys in, oh, we better uh, specify the excess inventory should be the chest, and we should specify the target side. It really doesn't matter. There we go. What that should do is always create an axe for us. So we'll constantly be creating stone axes. Every time a stone axe is removed from this inventory, it'll automatically, within a second or two, create a new stone axe uh, using the, the cobblestone and the uh, wood. So sometimes you have to close out of the uh, inventory and reopen it just for it to sink, but you'll see it's constantly creating new axes for us. Cool. What I'm going to do here then is specify that the green system is the extract, and we're going to say that's um, always active. And what that should do then is pull the axes out of the uh, chest and throw them into this here guy. Nice. You can see it's obviously using the uh, durability on the axe every time it chops down the trees. The trees probably all got chopped down that had grown up there. Beautiful, looking good. So this system's actually working really well. Um, we can see that we're automatically producing the axes that we need, and it's gonna constantly grab all the wood that we need and throw it into this chest. The only last piece to do here is to move any excess wood, uh, saplings, and apples into um, the barrels up there. So we can do that with uh, Steve's factory manager just fine. We'll uh, say for instance, you know, we're used to, uh, we're already inputting to the chests. And then uh, the first place we output is to the alloy smeltery to keep half a stack of wood in there. Uh, the next place we're going to output, uh, we'll just add on another output line. And we're going to choose all four barrels Cool, and that should all we have to do. Doesn't matter which side we output to on barrels, they'll accept from any side. And we'll just do an empty blacklist, meaning all items will be allowed in there. And what we should see when we do that is all items get pulled out of the chest. Nice. Um, and we can come over here and we'll see that now the uh, wood and the apples have all started to move into there. That's cool. Let me sleep through the night and there's one or two more tweaks we have to do to get the system fully operational. So you'll notice that we no longer have wood in the chest down there because we're moving it all to the barrels. So we better add this barrel as a place that we can pull wood from. So this uh, along the Z coordinate, it's the one, uh, the highest Z number. So it should be 530. What's nice is with Steve's factory manager, you can see the coordinates of each block. So I'm just gonna add to the input here. Not only can you pull from the igneous extruder in the chest, but we also wanna find uh, the Z530. So there's 530, 529. 528 and 527, we'll add this better barrel here so that now uh, we have access to that wood and whenever we pull a stone axe out again, uh, what we should see is the creation again and we can see the wood planks and sticks doing its thing. So uh, repeated creation of stone. The last piece we're gonna wanna do is make sure that uh, we can pull the charcoal out of here. All we really need to do for this is add that to the input because as we know, um, when we input from the chest, we're outputting uh, only wood to the alloy smeltery. We can also, uh, we're also outputting to all the different barrels. So if we add the alloy smeltery as an option, what we should see is the charcoal disappear from it because it's gonna pull items out of both the alloy smeltery and the chest, try and put wood into the alloy smeltery, and then uh, put everything else in the four barrels that are upstairs. And as you can see, we should have gotten a bunch of charcoal in there. Nice, uh, that's pretty cool. And the only other thing I wanna do is add one more thing, let's see. I might wanna specify it so that it knows it can pull, uh, because it's gonna, well, you know what? No, it should be fine, it should be all right. Keep an eye on it, but I wanna kinda balance out the um, wood production I was hoping I could balance it. Let's let it run for a while and see how it does. If I'm not getting enough wood, then I can do some tweaks to make sure that we continue to get some. It'll probably um, produce lots of uh, charcoal for us, and that's okay, because charcoal is really what we want out of this farm. What'll probably happen, and we're gonna have to let this run for a little bit and see if I'm right, but it'll probably, um, unless I'm wrong, produce a ton of charcoal for us, and then uh, wind up moving on from charcoal into wood production. So for now, I think we're in pretty good shape with this wood farm. Yeah, and it's even more efficient than the ones I've made in the past on uh, the server play series because we're not using the energy usage uh, machines that require energy to craft, and we're using Steve's factory manager to handle our uh, production of axes and such. So I think that's a pretty cool solution and design to this build. 
All right, with that, guys, I'm going to wrap up the episode here. So I'm going to keep an eye on things and make sure everything's running smoothly. Uh, if we really wanted to speed this up, we could go get our sigil of the Green Grove and really get a good idea for how um, well this thing's going to operate. So let's snag that guy. Actually, he should be over here. There we go, sigil of the Green Grove. Let's take a look at this. So I'm going to head down there, activate this thing, and then we should see some pretty rapidly growing trees. There we go. Oh yeah, there they go. Nice. That's cool. So you can see how quickly uh, your trees are going to grow as long as your green grove is activated. Oh, that's awesome. And it's going to continuously chop down the trees for us. Beautiful. Um, obviously, we're going to get a bunch of wood and a bunch of charcoal out of this system, which I like the sound of. Uh, let's turn this thing off for a minute. Oops. Uh, we want to not click on any blocks to turn it on and off. So how's this thing doing? So he's keeping his 32 wood in there. That's actually pretty good, the fact that I limited that. In fact, if I limited it even more, that would even really make sure. You know what, let's limit this to six or something like that. Yeah, six ought to be good. What that'll mean is if it, as long as it chops down more than, you know what, let's, let's limit it even to three. Yeah, that'll make sure that we have a good balance between... Um, wood and, and uh, charcoal production, because what it'll do is when it chops down, let's say, five or six pieces of wood, uh, if the smelter is already empty, three of them will go in here and the excess will go into the barrels, so we'll have both wood and charcoal being produced. That's not bad. Uh, we might want to add a system so that it can pull the wood out of this barrel to make the charcoal, but I, I just want to kind of make sure it's semi-balanced and we have both wood and charcoal being produced. Anyway, for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Automated wood farm. This could be self-sufficient, by the way. All I need to do is add a sterling generator down here. Uh, the sterling generator, which I already have in my inventory, all I got to do is hook it up so the charcoal lands in here. And uh, what I can do then is, you know what, maybe I'll just set this up real quick uh, with an octodic capacitor. This is going to make it so that uh, this machine can generate 80 RF per tick uh, from charcoal, and it'll do a really nice job of it. Uh, all I need to do then also is, um, you know what, let's set this guy just to push into the adjacent inventory. I don't know if it'll be faster to do that than uh, the factory manager will grab it, but let's, we'll see. And then I can just tap this thing onto here, and then we can break this connection. Oops, that was my, not my other wrench. There we go, see everything mode. We can break this connection, and now we're no longer dependent on base's lava power. Uh, we can actually rely on the power that we're getting from the tree farm to power it. So completely self-sufficient. How's that sound? Oh, look, the generator's running. Nice. So the charcoal will get output into here. In the event that this thing's full, uh, we can, you know, do whatever we need. Might want to set it up so that it'll, like, auto-turn off or something. We'll see. I'll come up with something good for it. Anyway, for now, Darwell20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.